Kakigurui vs. Kaiji. These series are very similar and also very different in a lot of ways, but they both revolve around gambling, specifically high-stakes gambling. So I thought it might be fun to compare them in various aspects and see where each series shines the most. I'll be avoiding spoilers in this discussion, so if you haven't seen either anime before, maybe you can use this video to help you decide what you might like to watch. Honestly, you should check them both out. There's a good chance you'll like both anime. Let's start by talking about the protagonists, because I think this is what most people will be interested in when comparing and contrasting. Kaiji himself versus Yumeko from Kakegurui. Let's talk about their skill as gamblers, their willpower, and their entertainment value. So first of all, regarding their skills, now from what I've seen, this is basically a one-sided stomp. I will admit that I haven't read the manga yet for either series, so this is just an anime versus anime comparison, but Kaiji seems a lot closer to a normal human in terms of skill level, while Yumeko is just unrealistically smart, observant, and her game sense is off the charts. She can typically master a game and reverse sweep somebody on her very first day playing it, although sometimes this does require her to challenge the other person to a rematch after quote-unquote losing. Now, she does have one major weakness, and that's her love of gambling. Yumeko is the type of person where if you wanted to defeat her, you could just challenge her to a 50-50 coin flip game, and you would essentially have a 50% chance of beating her, and she would accept these conditions. She is an absolute gambling addict with self-destructive tendencies. So Kaiji could defeat her at least half of the time, especially in RNG-based games, but if you start expanding the limit and comparing them in skill-based games as well, I feel like she would win more often than not, and by a pretty wide margin. So if Yumeko wins 50% of the RNG games and 80% of the skill games, this means that she's still going to win more games than Kaiji overall. It's not impossible for him to win a game against her, and for all I know, he could become a lot more powerful in his own manga, but based on what I know right now, I would give this one to Yumeko pretty comfortably. The second point has to do with their willpower, and this one is a lot more nuanced. You see, it has to do with the fundamental nature of the two anime and how they're different. So if I look at Kaiji to give an analogy, the games in Kaiji tend to be something like this. Imagine you're being chased by a bear and eventually you run into a dead end. Now, from this position, there's really only a few things you can do. You resolve your will and try to escape. You could fight the bear, you could try to play dead, you could try to outsmart the bear, or you could give up, fall on the ground, start crying, and just admit defeat. So Kaiji's strength is that when he's put into these situations, granted, it's not against a bear, but super unfair games where the odds are massively stacked against him, he pretty consistently displays the willpower and the tenacity to at least make an attempt to fight his way back and to claw his way to victory. He is the ultimate underdog, and if you enjoy rooting for that type of character, I could definitely see preferring Kaiji as a protagonist. Yumeko's case is very different and quite amusing because in her situation in Kakigurui, she's almost never forced into playing any games against her will. Even when she was given the status of Mike, she didn't particularly mind, and honestly, she still always feels like she's completely in control of her own destiny no matter what. In this situation, it's like the bear is locked in a cage, and Yumeko is the type of person who has that special willpower to just willingly walk into the cage with the bear. She might win, she might lose, but she thinks that something interesting will happen if she chooses to play, and so she does. The willpower needed to willingly walk into a dangerous situation for the risk of gaining a reward is very different from being forced into a situation where you have no choice but to fight, and then testing your will and your ability to respond based on those conditions. I think this one is ultimately a wash. It's going to come down to personal preference. If you prefer characters like Yumeko who are always in control of the game and they're just waiting for the right moment to annihilate their cheating opponent with a massive turnabout, then I could see favoring her here as well instead of Kaiji. The tiebreaker for me really and the quality that I care about the most is the characters themselves and their entertainment value, the third point I wanted to compare. I think the humor and characters in Kaiji resonate with some people better, but for me, I think Yumeko is way more funny, she's way more entertaining, and I just like her more as a character all around, plus I like her design and the art style in Kakegurui. This does mean that I'm a bit shallow, but it does give Yumeko an edge here. Ultimately, on a protagonist comparison, I solidly preferred Kakegurui. Yumeko herself is just too good. 
By the way, this video was suggested to me by several commenters and people who had watched my previous video, where I ranked all of the games in Kakegurui. If you're interested in that, go check it out. I have a ranking video for Kaiji planned in the future as well, but I thought this video would be a little bit easier to make. Second, let's talk about the quality of the games themselves. Now, obviously both series are very entertaining, and a lot of this entertainment value comes from the games that are played in each respective series. My immediate take on this is that I preferred the games from Kakegurui slightly, but in fairness I watched this more recently, so there might be a little bit of recency bias. If I went back and watched Kaiji again, which I plan to do when I research my next video, I might end up liking the games from that series more overall than I did in the past. I don't want to give too much weight to this category because I think it's a pretty close comparison either way. In the interest of fairness, I'm going to mention my gripes with the games in Kakegurui. There are a few games with almost completely random outcomes, and these tend to rank lower for me. I think in Kaiji, while luck almost always plays a huge factor in the games, it also always felt like there is some way you can influence the outcome. Maybe this is the opposite of recency bias, and I'm looking back at Kaiji with rose-tinted goggles, but I do think this comparison holds up, unless I'm forgetting some very purely RNG-based games in that series. Additionally, Kakegurui has a few arcs that have games which honestly make very little sense, especially if the characters aren't being forced to play, like in Kaiji. Some of these can still be entertaining, and I actually ranked a few of them quite high, but it does seem like some of the worst offenders are basically just filler arcs or time wasters. Kaiji is a lot more focused. I think Kaiji's dedication to only showing the most important games in the anime is a huge advantage here. The manga versus manga comparison might end up being different, but if I'm just looking at the anime, Kakegurui's best games are better than anything in Kaiji for me. However, I think if you cut out the filler and the worst games in Kakegurui, it would have elevated the series to another level. As it stands, this comparison is pretty close for me, and I keep going back and forth on this one. Third, let's compare the stakes and the tension in each series. Going back to my point above, where I talked about being cornered by a bear versus walking into the cage, this really illustrates the fundamental difference between the stakes in each series. However, the bear itself isn't exactly as scary in both scenarios, they're kind of different. Games in Kakegurui tend to be a lot lower stakes, where nobody's life is really on the line. We do get some information about these life plans that are handed out by the student council, where your entire life is essentially chosen for you by the student council, and you have to spend the rest of your life doing whatever the plan says. But characters don't seem to be forced to follow along with these plans. Rebellious people like Mary can fight against the system and win back their freedom, so the life plan itself isn't even a sealed fate. The life plan doesn't reinforce its own authority. It doesn't compel anyone to follow the plan. You just refuse to obey, and then you figure out a way to win back your freedom. I feel like if Kaiji ever loses, the consequences would be a lot more severe and a lot more permanent. If Kaiji lost everything at the wrong moment, the end of the series would be like a horror story. It is night and day comparison. I do think it can be interesting to see who's going to win between Yumiko and her opponents. The games are hilarious, they're amusing, they're entertaining, but the amount of tension is on a whole different level. I give the advantage to Kaiji here. Finally, let's talk about the supporting characters. Now, I think even discussing this topic pretty obviously, if you're familiar with both shows, gives a huge advantage to Kakegurui. It just wins, hands down, in this category. And it's not even a comparison, really. However, I felt like if I failed to bring this up, it would also be extremely unfair towards Kakegurui, because this is one of the aspects where the series really shines, and to not discuss it at all would be a disservice. This is a show where a lot of the secondary and even tertiary characters have become fan favorites. They've been given their own arcs and development. Many of them are equally as popular as Yumiko, or possibly even more so. There's a ton of community involvement, discussions, art. There's shipping wars, there's fan works. Kaiji doesn't have this. And if you don't care about this aspect of a series, then it doesn't matter to you. But it still can't be denied that there's a huge gap here in terms of the secondary characters. There really aren't any supporting characters in Kaiji that I can remember off the top of my head. Definitely, none of them stood out to me. The series is mostly about Kaiji himself, and the people around him are very temporary, and they change from arc to arc. You could say that Kakegurui has a bountiful garden of supporting characters and cast members, while Kaiji's anime doesn't even have any soil for a garden to grow. Even if people wanted to latch onto these secondary characters, there aren't any great options available. The incredible art direction and unique character designs of Kakegurui make it possible to introduce a ton of characters and have so many of them make a huge impact right away. 
People do complain about Season 2 having so many forgettable characters, but I think this reaction is mostly because we were spoiled by how great the characters in Season 1 were. Additionally, it's not even just style, there's also substance here too. Unlike the kaiji anime, which solely follows the protagonist, Kakegurui actually spends a lot of time rotating other characters into the spotlight and having them shine in their own games, as well as some characters being allowed to play games without Yumiko involved and take on a protagonist role in their own arcs. Another thing I loved was how in certain games, the roles almost feel reversed. Yumiko is like the antagonist, and the other person is like a temporary protagonist. You get to see all of the thoughts that go into their head as they try to take her down, and it really fleshes out these characters a lot more, compared to how things would be if we only saw things from Yumiko's perspective. Overall, looking at these comparisons, I prefer Yumiko as the protagonist. The game quality is pretty close, but I give this slight edge to... Kakegurui, maybe? Or Kaiji? I still don't know. I think the stakes in Kaiji lead to more high-intensity games and storytelling, and Kakegurui's extremely strong supporting cast gives this series the edge overall. Now, I like Kakegurui more than I liked Kaiji, so this result isn't surprising to me. Obviously, since this is a video about my opinions, the conclusion is going to be very biased, and it will reflect my own personal views. I'm just really glad that I finally got around to watching Kakegurui. I think it's a fantastic series, and I'm also looking forward to reading the manga. On top of that, my previous video where I talked about Kakegurui got a lot of views and some really great comments, so I was really happy to see that kind of engagement on the channel. If you want to make Ryurika smile, please send all of your likes, comments, and subs over here. For now, enjoy the rest of your day.